So we're on the fourth Sunday of Handbook of Wisdom Books and Psalms, and we're going to finish up on Job today. So uh, we're doing kind of a retro Sunday. No PowerPoint for you, but just a PowerPoint for me. <laughs> and, um, but I also have, um, I, I want us to be able to focus on um, the themes within the book of Job. We, we started out with a general over, overview of history and what's behind the book of Job. Then we went verse by verse for several chapters. Now I want to go back to the overview. And so I want to talk about the, the six key themes in the book of Job. Uh, and one of those is that there's a dis, divine discourse that demonstrates God's sovereignty. Okay, so that's what we're going to focus on first. There's a lot of talk about Job being a brilliant poem. So it's a it's a brilliant poem. Many uh, uh, contemporary uh, theologians say it's a brilliant poem discussing the majestic power of, of God. Uh, and it's um, in addition to that, there are actually more than 70 unanswered questions posed by uh, to Job by Yahweh or by God. And this all takes place in chapter 38 to 40. Actually through 44, but we're going to do we're going to focus on 38 and 39. Um, and so as we go through this, I'd kind of like to have you think in terms of you, you get to pick your, your persona. You are either um, Job listening to all these questions and trying to figure out how do I respond, or you can be the human being, the person, the author who wrote this question, who is trying to describe the majesty of God and why things are so complex that it's not simply a matter of good are we rewarded, the evil are punished. So I want you to take one of those one of those approaches. Either you are the author trying to explain why life is complex, uh, or your Job listening to all this and being challenged by it. Um, the, our book, the author of our book says, the questions are not to crush Job, not to mock him. It's a revelation of God in his constant care for the world. So you need to think about if, if, that, if you think that applies, if that's accurate. Uh, the questions teach Job that by Yahweh's design, the world has ordered structure. So it has structure. Now, keep in mind, I, I, I keep throwing this retribution theology at you. That's a very ordered system. If you're good, you're rewarded. If you're bad, you're punished. So keep that in mind when the, the author says, the questions teach Job that Yahweh's design of the world has ordered structure. And finally, the discourse focuses first on the physical world uh, and you know, talk about the rising of the sun, uh, the rain, the hail, and then it focuses on the animal kingdom. And and one of the things that one of the uh, one of the phrases or verses that strikes me as fascinating is it talks about the ostrich. And I don't know how many of you have read that divine discourse in chapters 38, 39, 40. But it talks about the ostrich and the ostrich is, in, in my language, so dumb <laughs> that it lays its eggs in the sand. Uh, other animals animals can tromp, uh, tromp on them. Uh, it doesn't care about its young. Hmm. And yet all that, the author says, is still part of the mystery of God because there even that that ostrich has a purpose. So um, I'm going to play for you uh, the, the verses, since I'm not going to read them all. <laughs> I stumbled too much. So here, here we start, and this starts with uh, Job 38, the first verse, and we'll move on from there. Job chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. 
I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together, and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, This far you may come and no farther, here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. The wicked are denied their light and their upraised arm is broken. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. What is the way to the abode of light? And where does darkness reside? Can you take them to their places? Do you know the paths to their dwellings? Surely you know, for you were already born. You have lived so many years. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow, or seen the storehouses of the hail which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle? What is the way to the place where the lightning is dispersed, or the place where the east winds are scattered over the earth? Who cuts a channel for the torrents of rain, and a path for the thunderstorm, to water a land where no man lives, a desert with no one in it, to satisfy a desolate wasteland and make it sprout with grass? Does the rain have a father? Who fathers the drops of dew? From whose womb comes the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens, when the waters become hard as stone, when the surface of the deep is frozen? Can you bind the beautiful Pleiades? Can you loose the cords of Orion? Can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons, or lead out the bear with its cubs? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you, here we are? Who endowed the heart with wisdom, or gave understanding to the mind? Who has the wisdom to count the clouds? Who can tip over the water jars of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clods of earth stick together? Do you hunt the prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in a thicket? Who provides food for the raven when its young cry out to God and wonder about for lack of food? Job chapter 39 Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you watch when the doe bears her fawn? Do you count the months till they bear? Do you know the time they give birth? They crouch down and bring forth their young. Their labor pains are ended. Their young thrive and grow strong in the wilds. They leave and do not return. Who let the wild donkey go free? Who untied his ropes? I gave him the wasteland as his home, the salt flats as his habitat. He laughs at the commotion in the town. He does not hear a driver's shout. He ranges the hills for his pasture and searches for any green thing. Will the wild ox consent to serve you? Will he stay by your manger at night? Can you hold him to the furrow with a harness? Will he till the valleys behind you? Will you rely on him for his great strength? Will you leave your heavy work to him? Can you trust him to bring in your grain and gather it to your threshing floor? The wings of the ostrich flap joyfully, but they cannot compare with the pinions and feathers of the stork. 
she lays her eggs on the ground and lets them warm in the sand, unmindful that a foot may crush them, that some wild animal may trample them. She treats her young harshly, as if they were not hers. She cares not that her labor was in vain, for God did not endow her with wisdom or give her a share of good sense. Yet when she spreads her feathers to run, she laughs at horse and rider. Do you give the horse his strength or clothe his neck with a flowing mane? Do you make him leap like a locust, striking terror with his proud snorting? He paws fiercely, rejoicing in his strength, and charges into the fray. He laughs at fear, afraid of nothing. He does not shy away from the sword. The quiver rattles against his side, along with a flashing spear and lance. In frenzied excitement he eats up the ground. He cannot stand still when the trumpet sounds. At the blast of the trumpet he snorts, Aha! He catches the scent of battle from afar, the shout of commanders and the battle cry. Does the hawk take flight by your wisdom and spread his wings toward the south? Does the eagle soar at your command and build his nest on high? He dwells on a cliff and stays there at night. A rocky crag is his stronghold. From there he seeks out his food, his eyes detected from afar. His young ones feast on blood, and where the slain are there is he.